Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. I bring the generic Goblin noise! Hey, gang. Using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. You may also want to know that Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway, this time for Corset 2021. By placing an order of $10 or more, or alternatively, you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope or postcard to the following address. Either of these options will get you entered to win, and please bear in mind, it's one entry per person. The contest will run from June 15th until July 3rd, 2020. Hey gang, welcome back! Today's game is a Jersey Boy special, filmed by none other than Trevor. In today's game, Harry is playing his feather deck, keeping Shadow Spear, Dreadhorde Arcanist, Two Mountains, Crimson Wisps, Ember Cleave, and Zada, Hedron Grinder. Ryan is playing Bruna, keeping a Moonring Island, a Plains, a Nimbus Maze, Eldrazi Conscriptions, Ghostly Prison, Propaganda, and Anith, Capuchin Paragon. Mike is playing his demon tribal Farika, keeping a Castle Garenbrig, Temple of Malady, Swamp, Deadly Tempest, Beast Within, and Thought Vessel. Trevor is playing his Lands Matter Golos, keeping a Forest, Lotus Cobra, Life from the Loam, Wayward Sword Tooth, Wooded Foothills, and Damnation. Trevor wins the die roll and starts us off. Trevor plays a Wooded Foothills and sacrifices it, losing one as he passes. Mike plays a tap Castle Garenbrig. Harry plays a Mountain and casts Shadow Spear. Ryan plays a tap Moonring Island. Trevor plays a Forest and casts Lotus Cobra. Mike plays his Temple of Malady, which comes in tapped, and he scries one, keeping it on top. Harry plays a Plains and casts a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Ryan plays a Nimbus Maze and passes. Trevor draws and casts Life from the Loam, returning to hand the Wooded Foothills. He plays it, getting a mana from the Cobra, and sacrifices the Foothills to go and find another Shock Land. He announces he'll lose the two so it comes in untapped, and with the floating mana and the land entering, which also gives him another floating mana, he has enough to cast away a red sword tooth. Trevor then decides to swing the Cobra at Ryan for two and passes, searching for a land. Mike plays a Swamp and casts a Thought Vessel. Harry plays a Mountain and casts Talisman of Conviction. He gears up the Arcanist with a Shadow Spear and goes to combat. He hits Trevor for two and gains two life. At the end of turn, Ryan cycles a Lonely Sandbar, drawing a card. He then cycles a Secluded Step and draws another card, which at this point has Ryan cycling more often than my Gavi deck does sometimes. Ryan plays a Plains and casts Danatha before passing turn. Trevor dredges the life back to his hand and recasts it, returning three of the lands from his yard. He replays his Wooded Foothills, netting another mana from the Cobra, and then plays Arid Mesa, getting another one. He sacrifices both of his fetches and shortcuts knowing he'll have the mana to cast Golo once the Cobra sees the lands entering and makes him some mana. This way saves the table some time as Trevor goes to find three lands and he hits Mike with the Cobra before passing. Mike plays a Swamp and casts a main phase beast within on Golos and passes turn. Harry casts a Crimson Wisps on the Arcanist, making it a red creature and giving it haste and then draws a card. He loses one life as he taps the Talisman to help pay for Feather and then pays zero for a Mox Amber. Moving to combat, the Arcanist goes at Ryan and this lets Harry cast the Crimson Wisp from his yard. The Arcanist becomes even redder still and draws Harry a card. The spell is exiled because of Feather's ability and Harry's creature then deals two with Harry gaining two life. He casts in a Crow and Crusader in his post-combat main phase and moving to his end step he puts the Crimson Wisp back to his hand from Feather's trigger. Ryan plays a Flagstones of Trocare as his land drop and casts Propaganda. He goes to combat, hitting Mike with Danatha and passes. Trevor dredges back his life again, putting the top three to his yard. He recasts the Loam in his main phase, returning more lands to hand. 
He replays the two fetches, gaining two more floating mana from the Cobra, and then taps two more lands to cast Damnation. Trevor also cracks the fetches before finalizing the board wipe to net two more floating mana with the Cobra. He then puts three mana into Eternal Witness, which enters and returns Hour of Promise to Trevor's hand. He then passes turn. Mike plays a Swamp and casts a Mimic Fat, sadly a turn too late. Harry casts a Boros Locket and then taps it for one white for a Steel Shaper's Gift. This tutors up his copy of Sword of Feast and Famine and puts it to his hand and he passes to Ryan. Ryan plays another Plains and casts Ghostly Prison to double up on not being attacked. He passes to Trevor. Trevor draws and plays a Steam Vents untapped, taking two. He casts the Hour of Promise and goes to find two lands to put to field. He grabs a Cabal Coffers and a Field of the Dead, which sees the Coffers and itself come in, making Trevor two zombies. Moving to combat, the Witness hits Harry for two. Mike plays a Swamp and casts his Commander, Farika, before passing. Harry pays the Commander tax for Feather, and he casts Crimson Wisps on her, giving her haste and drawing a card. He exiles the Wisps to Feather's trigger and hits Trevor in the air with her. He then moves to his end step, putting the card back to hand. Ryan plays a Zalfin Void, scrying one and keeping it on top. He taps out for Bruna and passes to Trevor. Trevor plays a Cascading Cataracts as his land for turn, gaining a zombie from the Field of the Dead. He activates the Coffers, having found Urborg the first time with Golos, and makes 12 black mana, and uses it to cast Golos again. He goes to find a land, settling on a Maze of Ith. This makes him another zombie token as it comes in. Trevor then casts one of my favorite win cons, Door to Nothingness, and then swings 6 damage at Harry, and he passes turn. Mike plays a Forest, and passes. Harry casts his Sword of Feast and Famine, but it's mana drained by Trevor. He then recasts the Wisps again on Feather, drawing a card and exiling the spell. We then see more draw from Harry with a Faithless Looting, and he discards two after drawing two. He goes to combat, hitting Trevor again with Feather for three. He then plays a Tap Boros Guildgate, and passes. Ryan plays an Island and goes to combat. He declares Bruna going at Trevor, which triggers Bruna as she's declared an attacker, and Ryan gets to put Spirit Mantle, Eldrazi Conscription, and Steel of the Godhead onto Bruna. This has Bruna connecting with Trevor for 18 commander damage, and Ryan also gains 18 life. In his post-combat main phase, Ryan then casts Tragic Arrogance. He picks Golos as Trevor's artifact and creature, Farika and Thought Vessel for Mike, and he lets Harry keep the locket. He decides to keep his propaganda and Bruna, and everything else gets wiped. At the end of turn, Mike uses Cross and Grip to take out Golos. Trevor draws and activates the coffers. He gains 13 black mana and casts Merciless Eviction, exiling all creatures. He has enough to still recast Golos again, who comes in and goes to find him a land. It's a Bajuka Bog this time, which comes in and exiles Ryan's yard. Trevor then casts Sky Shroud Claim to find two more forest cards for the field, and he gets some zombie tokens as the lands come in. Trevor then plays a Glacial Chasm from hand, sacrificing a forest as it comes in, and making a zombie from the Field of the Dead trigger. Mike casts a Demon of Wailing Agonies, and passes. Harry draws, and casts Wrath of God to wipe the board. He passes turn. Ryan draws, and casts Scrabbling Claws. He takes a look at Trevor's yard, and exiles the Sky Shroud claim by tapping it. He then pays one, sacrificing the claws to exile life from the loam, and draw a card. Trevor lets the Chasm go to the yard, and draws for turn. He activates the coffers for mana, and taps a few more lands to help cast Yerik. He then brings out Golos, this time getting to go and find two lands. He grabs Dark Depths, and Thespian Stage, thankfully both coming and tapped. This will also give him four zombie tokens from the field seeing two lands enter, and Yerik doubling those triggers. Trevor then uses the Cascading Cataracts to help filter some of his remaining black mana into what he needs to activate Golos. He exiles his top three, and first casts an Ovenwald Hydra. This lets him go and find two more lands again, and gives him four more zombies. He grabs a Valakut and a Vesuva, with the Vesuva coming in as a copy of Coffers. He also casts the Path of Exile on one of his zombies, as well as casting his Lightened Tutor to find an artifact or enchantment for the top. He grabs a basic mountain, and puts Prismatic Omen on top of his library, and remembers his zombies from the land entering. 
Mike, as always, has the perfect answer for Trevor's ridiculous board state, and with a smile, cast Deadly Tempest. This will wipe the board, and has the Tempest dealing enough damage to take Trevor out of the game, and with nothing else, Mike passes. Harry draws and flashes back Faithless Looting. He then plays a Windscarred Crag, gaining one life as it enters, and passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a Plains and recasts Bruna. He then passes to Mike. Mike plays out a Drum Hunter and passes. At the end of turn, he doesn't get a trigger. Harry plays Castle Embrith and casts Monastery Mentor and then Zada, and he passes turn. Ryan draws and goes to combat. He swings Bruna at Harry and resolves her trigger putting Ethereal Armor onto his commander. Harry then gets hit for 7, and Ryan passes. Mike brings out Demon of Death's Gate, and he moves to his end step, drawing from the Drum Hunter trigger. Harry plays a Tap Beseju in his main phase and casts Crimson Wisps. He layers his triggers to resolve the Mentor first, and then resolves Zada's trigger to copy the spell on each creature he controls. Responding to this, Ryan uses Swords on the Mentor and exiles it, having Harry gain 2 life before the Prowess trigger resolves. Harry then resolves the Zada trigger and draws two cards from the two Crimson Wisps. He passes through his phases to Ryan. Ryan untaps and draws. He goes at Harry again with Bruna, but Harry casts Valorous Stance to exile the Angel. Ryan casts a Void Shatter to save his commander, but Harry is ready with a Dual Caster Mage to copy the counter and counter the counter. Void Shatter your Shatter. <laughs> Ryan then passes. Mike draws and plays a Swamp. 4 mana gets him a whip of Erebos, and moving to combat, Mike pays to allow his demon to swing at Ryan, and Mike gains 9 life. He then moves to his end step, drawing a card from the Drum Hunter trigger. Harry plays a Clifftop Retreat, and loses 2 from tapping his Seiju. He then taps a lot more mana to recast Feather, and passes. Ryan draws, and casts an Unsettled Mariner. He then has no choice but to pass. Mike's turn has him moving to combat and paying 2 again to hit Ryan with the Demon of Death's Gate. He gains 9 thanks to the lifelink the Demon gets from the Whip of Erebos, and Mike then casts an Overseer of the Damned in his post-combat main phase. It comes in and targets Zada with the Destroy Trigger. Harry responds to this with a God's Willing, which gets copied onto all of his available creatures he controls. He picks Black, saving Zada, and then scries 1 4 times in a row. Mike then passes, drawing at the end of turn from the Drum Hunter, and Harry puts the spell back to his hand. Harry casts Defiant Strike on Zada, getting a Zada trigger and a Feather trigger. He draws 4 after pumping his board by plus 1 plus 0 with the strike, and then exiles it to be put to hand at the end of turn. He plays a Plains and taps it for 1 white to cast Bandage. This lets him draw another 4 cards as it resolves with Zada, and is then exiled with Feather. He loses 2 more life to the Beseju, and uses it to cast a Blackblade Reforged, which he equips to Feather. He then casts God's Willing again, picking Black once more, and scries one four more times. He then swings Feather at Mike, who can't block because of the protection, and Harry casts Psychotic Fury to give her double strike and take him out. He also draws a card as well. He then moves to his end step, getting the cards in exile and putting them back to hand. Ryan activates his Moonring Island before moving to his turn, and he sees an Angelic Destiny, which won't save him from what he just saw Harry cast, and will presumably do so again on his turn, so Ryan scoops it up. Game review time. So, I think it's safe to say that everyone identified Trevor as the main threat early on, and rightly so. I think Golos is a particularly scary commander, because even if you have to recast him, you're still getting a land out of it, and if they don't deal with him, chances are you're going to activate his ability and get up to three potential spells for free. Mike seemed to have a lot of good answers in this game using Crossing Grip, Beast Within, and Deadly Tempest to great effect. Unfortunately, since he was Demon Tribal, a lot of his creatures were very expensive, and being surrounded by three other white decks with board wipes made him really unable to expand his board state and start doing tons of damage like he wanted. Speaking of tons of damage, both Angels, Bruna and Feather, did a fantastic job of smashing in for either lethal or almost lethal, and in Ryan's case, gained him a ton of life. It's interesting to see the two, as they're both kind of Ultrani based commanders, but the difference being, Ryan's deck was a lot more fragile to graveyard hate, as we saw with the Pajuka Bog, whereas Harry required a ton more mana to be able to cast all his spells on his commander and then get them back at the end of turn. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta, 
You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.